God bless you all, brothers and sisters. My name is Pastor Antonio Silva, and along with my wife, we are the missionaries of the United Pentecostal Church of Colombia here in the United Kingdom, more precisely here in the city of London. Thank you very much for allowing us to come to you on this special day, on this special day of celebration, on this special day where we can come and exalt the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I would like to thank Brother uh, Pastor Gerson Ramirez for inviting me to be part of this event, uh, Firm Foundations Online English Conference. Well, it's a conference not as we are used to have them because we are now online. Everything is now virtual. But the good thing is that we can, we can um, go everywhere in the world and this can be heard everywhere around the world with no limitations. Hallelujah. It is a great pleasure to also to, to uh, greet all the brothers and sisters uh, from the United Latin American Pentecostal Church. I'd like to greet um, the president, Brother Jenner Puentes, and all the, the board of directors of the church, and all the brothers and sisters who are working for the Lord in the United States. We, uh, the United States and the, the Latin American Church, Pentecostal Church for us is very um, close to our, to our hearts since it is there where we started our ministry with the church and the Lord has led us and we are um, working under His will and under in His purpose. So thank you very much for allowing us, me, to come to you today in this special event. Praise the Lord. Well, today is a day where we are um, seeking the face of the Lord, where we are listening to the praises and worshiping the Lord, and we are also listening to um, the Word of God for our lives. And I believe that the Lord has a, as, a, as, a, as an important message. Now, I know that we're going to be various messages. We are listening to various messages, messages today, but I believe that the Lord has one message for each and every one of us. Um, and we need to focus, focus in the Spirit, to see really, to, to hear the voice of the Spirit. And so I encourage you, uh, my brothers and sister, to be open, to, be, to have an open heart to what the Lord wants to say to us today. Praise the Lord. Well, at this moment, I would like you to turn into your Bibles in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24. At the same time, receive um, the greetings from my wife. She cannot be uh, next to me at this moment. Um, and receive also the greetings from the church here in, um, in the United Kingdom. Uh, we presently, we have five churches here in London. We have three established churches and two uh, more newborn churches that we are working in with outreach programs to establish those two other baby churches in the area of Richmond here in London and also in the areas Forest Hill here in London. The other two are located in East London, North London, and we are located in the Central London. And also the Lord has opened a door for us in last year to begin visiting the city of Edinburgh in Scotland. And there also we are starting a community, a church there in the city of Edinburgh. It's about, it's around eight hours driving from here uh, towards the north. As you know, uh, the United Kingdom is made up of, of four countries. We are here in England, there is uh, Wales, there is North Ireland, and uh, Scotland. And so we're praying that the Lord may open doors. Everywhere He leads, we will go. Everywhere there is a door open, we will enter through that door. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. Good. So we go into the Bible uh, in the book of Luke, chapter 24, and we read from verse 44 until verse 49. I'm reading from the standard, the English standard version, and the Bible says, Then he said to them, Jesus speaking, Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. 
and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his, in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to pray. I want to invite you to close your eyes. We're going to pray. May the Lord um, speak to us today in a special way. Lord God, we pray at this moment, Lord Jesus, all with thanksgiving for the opportunity given to us to, to reach out to you in this a uh, special moment where we can listen to your word once again. Lord Jesus, we need a word from you today, Lord God. We need a word, Lord God, that would, that would give us guidance, that would give us purpose. Hallelujah. Clarity in the mission that you have entrusted us, in the mission that you have entrusted the church, so we may remain steadfast, firm in our mission. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. Very well. So um, this scripture is quite uh, an, an amazing scripture, as a matter of fact. Um, because it, 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 from the Lord Jesus himself, after his resurrection, he appeared to the, to the 11, because the 12 had already betrayed him. So he appeared to the 11 after his resurrection, and he began, he began to tell them, to tell them about the purpose of their mission, the purpose of their mission, and, and what should be included in that mission. Hallelujah. And I believe today that um, uh, many of us, we are, we, 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 we need to have a clear understanding of what God wants for us. As people of God, for what God for God wants from us as Church of God, Hallelujah! Because we are not here by accident. We are not here just to 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 warm an, a, a seat or in the church or just to be there, you know, having a good time with our brothers and sisters in the church, you know, kind of a club kind of mentality. You know, where we can come a place, where we can celebrate our birthdays, where we can say, hi, it's good to see you. And that's it. It's more than that because, because our mission, our mission is more than that. I know with all these social distance things that are, that are going around today, uh, here in the United Kingdom, we have two meter, uh, um, uh, keep our distances two meters from each other. In, 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 in France, it's one meter. In other places, it's one meter and a half. In another place, I heard one meter and 40. I don't know how to calculate this. In another one, one, one meter and 80. So, but it's our, 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 our need of, to socialize has been compromised by this virus. So as you know, we cannot be together. We have to be here through this um, little square here, this little screen, and we can see each other, um, and that's about it. But let me tell you one thing. We are united in the spirit. Doesn't matter the distance, doesn't matter how far you are, we are united in the spirit. We need to learn to live now by the spirit. And I really believe that the Lord is using all these uh, circumstances in order to make us grow in the spirit and so that we, we 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 can be aware and we may be um informed and and led into what god wants for our life and to be to be firm about it to be truthful faithful in the mission that god has entrusted us so the disciples were there the, the 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 apostles were there jesus had died he's he came back to life he was with them now and they needed to know okay what's next now okay you are you have risen so are you going to stay here forever with us 
or what is the deal here? What what is the next step? What is the next phase in this in this moment that we're living? Now we are hiding because they they want to they want to kill us. They want they, they're looking for us to to to, to know uh, where Jesus is, where we have left the body, and all the stuff. And we are in hiding. And and now we are here with you, Jesus. But but so what's what's the deal? What's what's going to happen now? So. Of course, the disciples, they, they wanted an answer for their, their conundrum at that, at that moment, for their problem. But Jesus, hallelujah, he knows better. He began to give them the their, their purpose, the purpose, hallelujah, the purpose for them, for the future, in the ministry, in the work that they were interested in. Because this group of 12, of 11, as they were now, it was just not just a little group there to, to mingle and to have fun and to be together, you know, to eat together. No, they were entrusted a mission, a mission. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord here in this scripture that we just uh, read, we see, we see the purpose. We see the purpose uh, of, of that mission and how to fulfill it. Hallelujah. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations. We must proclaim repentance for forgiveness of sin in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To all nations, hallelujah, in the power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Our, first of all, our mission is to proclaim repentance for forgiveness of sins, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, to all nations. That's the first thing that we must realize, that that's the first um, priority, hallelujah, because that's the will of God to all for everyone. He does not want anyone to, to perish. He wants everyone to proceed to repentance. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. This is the first. This is the first purpose. Hallelujah. This is the first thing that God wants us to, 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 to proclaim, to announce. Hallelujah. First, people need to be transformed. First, people need to be informed and taught that there needs to, there, there needs to be a, a turnabout phase. There needs to be a turnaround, a U-turn, hallelujah, from their ways of life. Hallelujah. That's repentance. To die to their, to their, to their, to their ego, to die to their lives and turn to Jesus who will have mercy upon them. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. The scripture, the scripture is clear, is clear when it speaks about repentance. I mean, this is not a, this message of repentance was not a, a new message. They, they, they knew, they knew what, what Jesus meant when he was talking about repentance. Hallelujah. Because the Lord spoke about it in a prophetic way in the book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 55. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 6, seek the, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Praise the name of the Lord. He will abundantly pardon. Now this was in a prophetic way, Hallelujah. But God's God's uh, character, God's um, attribute, nature has never changed. He is a forgiving God. He is a God of mercy. He is a God of grace, and that has never changed since the first day, the moment that 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 Adam and Eve sinned. He provided a way out immediately. Immediately, he provided a way out. He clothed them. They were naked. He clothed them. Hallelujah. And at the same time, he made a promise 
for future, future generations that the Savior will come and deliver his people. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we serve a great God. We serve a merciful God. Hallelujah. We serve a God, hallelujah, that is interested in you. Hallelujah. And the source, the source of our mission is the Word of God. We depend on the Word of God, hallelujah. And the Word of God declares, declares that everyone should proceed to repentance. There must be a change. Hallelujah. The problem is today, you know, in many churches that there are people who are come to church and they are enjoying the, the, the fellowship. They're enjoying the presence of the Lord because the presence of the Lord, we enjoy it. Hallelujah. But God, God calls those people to repentance. And sadly enough, the message of repentance is not often enough preached. Hallelujah. Today, we need to make an emphasis in the repentance. Hallelujah. In the repentance from our sins. Hallelujah. And in the, because there is forgiveness. I mean, there is forgiveness for the one who repents. Hallelujah. The forgiveness is there. It's not a foreign uh, element. Forgiveness is there to anyone who repents. Praise the Lord. It's available. It's free of charge for everyone who repents. For everyone who, when he was walking towards death, when he was walking towards the end, and he thought that that was his, the right way. Because that's the, that's, that's the thing. Many people think that the way they, they are right now is, is the right way. But the, the end is the end of death. And that's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs. Why don't we go there? In the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, it says, There is a way that seems right to a man, to a man but its end is the way to death. Hallelujah. People are walking according to them on a right path. But they need to turn away because that path is a dead end. And literally, a dead end. There's no future. And when I'm talking about future, I'm not talking about future here on earth. I'm talking about eternal. The way is eternal damnation. But it seems to me that this is the right way. It seems to us, many, many people, it seems that that's the right way. But Jesus said, no, that's not the right way. I have another way for you. Turn out around. And that's where the message of the gospel is proclaimed, is presented. There is forgiveness of sin. If you keep on that way, you're going to die. Turn around and receive forgiveness of sin. Turn around, repent. Change of mind. Change of direction. Hallelujah. There is repentance today. And we need to be firm in this mission. We need to be firm in this purpose. Because it is a God-given purpose to the church. It is a God-given purpose to each and every one of us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you say praise the Lord? Hallelujah. So, like it is written, Jesus said that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead. And that repentance for the forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed. So we are proclaiming. We are proclaiming. Hallelujah. Repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Proclaiming means making it official. That's what proclamation means. When something is proclaimed, it's made official. Hallelujah. Now with the death, with the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, it is now official. There is forgiveness for sins. Repentance is available, of course, but repentance is what I must do. Hallelujah. Upon the listening, upon the upon receiving the message of, of forgiveness from God, that's something that I need to do. I need to repent. 
I need to change. And the Lord will give us. Hallelujah. He will give us the power. He will give us the instructions. He will give us. He will tell us. He will, he will guide us into all truth. Because this is a work of God. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So we have a message. And the message is a message of repentance. To proclaim. To make it official that there is, there is forgiveness of sin. Uh, for your sin, there, there, I mean, I mean, God paid the price. He paid the price so that you may not uh, go through the ordeal of having to do something about it because you cannot do it. You cannot save yourself. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. This is a free gift. Hallelujah. And the source of this mission is the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is based on the work of, uh, on the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Like it says in verse in verse 46 that Christ suffered and on the third day rise from the dead. That's the basis. That's the basis of our deliverance. The work of Christ on the cross demands that we repent of our sins. Just like he died, we need to die to sin. Just like he died. Remember, when Jesus was on the cross, he took upon himself all the sins of humanity. All the sins of humanity were upon him. Then this means that on the cross of Calvary, he became the person with most sin in the whole of humanity. He bore all of the sins, your sins, he bore them on the cross. He became the most sinful person without committing the sin. But he took upon himself the guilt. He took upon himself the wrath. And there, in that condition, with that burden of all humanity, he died. And that's the, that's the power of, of, of the gospel. Because in order to live, <clears throat> you need to die. Hallelujah. In order to live, now this may sound like a paradox, but it is like that. With us, to live, first you need to die. In order to be forgiven, in order to experience the forgiveness of God, you need to repent. You need to repent. And, and, and the Bible makes it plainly clear Hallelujah. In the book of Acts. Very known verse. Verse 38. And Peter said to them. Repent. And be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive. The gift. Of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Once again we see it here. God's purpose, repentance, forgiveness, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Isn't it wonderful that God gives us a, a, a clarity into our mission. Our mission as individuals and our mission as a church. We need to understand that that uh, we, as people of God, we are focused in our example. Jesus is our pattern. Jesus is our pattern. You know what a pattern is, right? A pattern is when you, for instance, when you're making a cloth, you want to make clothing. You want to make a pair of trousers or pants. And you have a, a piece of, of fabric there, blue jean fabric, big square, you know? And you need to make some trousers. 
and you ask yourself, okay, how do I make this? So you bring a little paper, and it's the pattern, the form, the shape, the size, and you put it on top, and you go and you draw around it, and that's the pattern. And you use this pattern for many pieces, many, many trousers, the same model. And Jesus is a model of salvation. He fulfilled salvation himself. So the same way he died, we need to die. Not physically, because we're not talking about physical death. We're talking about repentance. We need to die to sin. We need to die to my, to myself. To myself, I need to die to, to me. In order to receive new life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. God is wonderful. God is faithful. All times, God is faithful. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And the purpose of God is that this message, this message of, of repentance, that is not very often a, a very welcoming message because, as a matter of fact, the prophets in the Old Testament, their preaching was repentance. That's what their basic preaching calling people to turn to God. And because of that, they were killed, many of them. Because people don't like to hear um, them, someone telling them to change, to change their ways. They don't like to be told what to do, especially when they're doing something wrong. And they're confronted with their situation, they're confronted with their sins. So very often, repentance it's not a popular message, but it has to be preached. It has to be declared. It has to be made official because there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. And this message has to be preached, and it, like it says here, and it should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, to all nations nations and now this has to do with the extent of our mission first we spoke about the, the message the purpose our mission and now we speak about the extent the the the, the, the scope of our mission and the scope of our mission is the whole world and we need to know this now, well, you might say, well, I'm not going to go anywhere, but right there where you are, the world is around you. And when I'm talking about the whole world, here is talking about nations. And when he, and the Greek word for, for nations here is ethnos. Uh, speaking about uh, where we get the word ethnics, ethnicity, ethnicity, uh, ethnics, um, people from various languages, from various cultures. We live here in a city of London where it is believed that there are people here, there's around 300, 300 ethnicities that live here in this city. 300 different languages that are spoken in the city from various countries. So it's a very multicultural um, ambience here in this city. But our mission is to preach to all of them without making exception of people because of their color, because of their language, because of their, their social status. Doesn't matter. To everyone, everyone deserves to receive the message of forgiveness of their sins. So the, the limits is the world, the whole world, hallelujah. The nations of this world, hallelujah. And it's sad sometimes that we make exception of people. We have a message that is burning in our lives because the Lord worked in our lives and then we make, we choose who should and who shouldn't. Not because we, we think about it like that, 
but but just the fact of choosing who deserves to hear because this one is more I'm more comfortable talking to this one because he speaks the same language as me he has the same color he comes from the same country he eats the same way that I eat no no on the day of Pentecost the Lord performed a miracle and it is like the Lord made 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 it um its purpose to do it to fulfill to fill them with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost because he knew that people were going to come from many nations to celebrate Pentecost in Jerusalem. So he made sure that there were people from all the nations under the earth, like it says there in the in the book of Acts. They came from Europe, from Africa, from Asia, from everywhere the world as they knew it then. They came there, various cultures, various languages, and they came to worship to Jerusalem. And the Lord performed the miracle of giving them to speak in tongues. And really what they were speaking, they were speaking in different languages. Because God's purpose is to reach the nations. That's the idea. That's God's idea. Not to be to be to be narrow-minded to one people, to one nation, but to everyone. Hallelujah. With the tool that you have, your language. And if the Lord needs to give a message to someone in another language, you don't have it, but the Lord can do it. He can give you the ability to speak a language in order to proclaim his message to that person because he is the Lord. He is the one who gives the tongues. He is the one who gives the languages. Hallelujah. But we cannot be narrow-minded in the sense, no, it's only to these people because that this is the language I speak in the... Forget about that. Let the Lord use you the way he wants to use you. If you feel a call to go, to go somewhere very far and they don't speak English, they speak another language, they speak maybe a German or they speak Dutch or they speak uh, French or they speak, I don't know, uh, uh, Mandarin or they speak other languages, I don't know. And you say, well, I feel, I feel in my heart I call you to go there. But I don't speak the language. Let the Lord deal with that. If he is the one who called you, he will provide you with the tools in order for you to fulfill your mission. Because the extent of our mission is the whole world. And if that's the scope, if that's the extent, he will give us what we need. Hallelujah. I remember when we, when we were, about, when we were um, called to the missions, and we were called to go to um, to the Netherlands uh, in the first in the first instance in the year two thousand, and we stayed there for ten years. And me personally, in my human thought, thought I thought I thought, well, I have a calling to 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 to, to the missions, and Lord, you're going to send me wherever. You know, they speak the languages that I speak. I thought Spanish, French, or English, whatever, God, you choose. So I was telling God how to choose. No. And then the Lord opened the door for us to go to the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, they don't speak English. They don't speak French. They don't speak Spanish. They speak Dutch. And I had to learn Dutch. And the Lord performed the miracle. Hallelujah. At first, it was very hard. But the Dutch people, they deserve to hear the message of the gospel in their language. Because many of them understand English. They speak English. Yes, they do speak English. And you, you, you could speak to them. You can talk to them about the Lord in English. But they don't connect with God in the same way. Just in your own experience, some of you who are listening are are they 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 they, they speak English as as their second language, just like me. My English is not my first language. 
Hmm? And you may think, well, it gets to my heart in my language, in Spanish, in French, or whatever. Not in English. English is just a working language. It's just to go to work. I need it to, to work. But to connect to God. I need to connect with my mother tongue. And that's natural because that's how we were made. But our mission as people of God is to proclaim the word of God in the language where you are being sent. Hallelujah. May the Lord open our understanding and open our hearts. Open our hearts to the scope that is the whole world. Every people, every nation, every tribe, they deserve to listen to the word in their own language. Imagine, imagine if our missionary to, in, in Colombia, Bardo Larson, they sent all the way from Canada to, the, to, to Colombia. He spoke English and he was sent by a mission, by, by, a, by a Canadian mission uh, church. And they spoke English. And he went there. Imagine if we would have started doing services in Colombia, there in Bucaramanga, somewhere there, and starting the services and doing them in English. Makes no sense. In Colombia, they don't speak English. They speak uh, Spanish. So you have to. Because that's the will of God. Hallelujah. And God was showing his will on the day of Pentecost. Hmm? He said, starting in Jerusalem, but also in Judea, in Samaria, and the ones you don't get along with, you know, those ones there, the, the people you don't get along with, you're not used to go to talk to them, with them too. And even further, to the ends of the earth, because the scope is the world. The extent is the world. And we need to be firm on this. We need to be sure, steadfast on this. Oh, but how am I going to do? Well, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power. And that's why he says in verse 49 from Luke 24, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And here we see that it is Jesus who is the giver of the Spirit. And we are clothed with power. We are clothed with Him. Hallelujah. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be efficient in the work that He has entrusted us. Hallelujah. Because the extent is the world. And the message is repentance and forgiveness. So I encourage you today. If you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, receive it today, but repent. Turn around from that way you're headed because there's a dead end. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Receive him today. Hallelujah. Receive forgiveness for your sins. Hallelujah. And declare what you have experienced starting in your city and the scope and the extent is the world. And the Lord will fill you with the power in order to fulfill the mission. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we want to give you thanks for this moment that you have provided for us to be here in your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us today, Lord God, your purpose, how to be steadfast in our mission, how to fulfill your mission. Oh, Lord God, you don't want anyone to perish, but they will all proceed to repentance. This message should be preached to all nations in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, brothers. May the Lord keep you. Hallelujah.